Praise the Lord, friends, and welcome to the broadcast. I'm so glad that you tuned in. I am teaching from my series, Success Made Simple. You know what? Success is not hard when you look at the biblical principles and just apply them to our lives. And I think if we do one thing in the body of Christ, we tend to overcomplicate the things of God. And so I'm teaching this, this is working in my life, it's working in my wife's life, it's working in my children, all of my son's life, their families, and you know what? It will work for you, just like it works for us. God is no respecter of persons. God is a respecter of faith. And so we began this week in Joshua chapter one. In Joshua chapter one, Moses had just died. Joshua had been serving him for over 40 years. And God spoke to Joshua and said, listen, Moses, my servant is dead but I've called you to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. By the way, there's a few giants, but you be of good courage. You keep meditating the word, you keep speaking the word, you keep acting on the word, and you will be prosperous and you will have good success. What does good success look like? Good success is you going where God wants you to do, being what God wants you to be, having what God wants you to have, and saying what God wants you to say, amen? Good success is connected to your eternal purpose and destiny. And I believe that God wants everybody. I believe God's plan is for everybody to succeed. I don't believe that God made anybody to fail. I believe that he's called everyone to succeed. And that's different things for different people because we're uniquely created and called by God. Amen? Now, as we look at this, in verse 8 and verse 7 of uh, Joshua chapter 1, the Bible actually says, You know, meditate the word, and then he said, this book of the law, or the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you, Joshua, will make your way prosperous, (coughs) and you will have good success. The way for us to be prosperous, the way for us to have good success, is the same way that Joshua prospered and had good success. We can't meditate in the word, we keep speaking the word, and we keep acting on the word of God. The word of God works, and the word of God will work for you. Now, as Joshua did what God told him to do, Joshua led the children of Israel into the victory that God promised them. You know, Jesus has already paid for you to have victory. God has already promised you victory. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to get victory. But you're the one that has to walk it out, and you walk it out by faith. And and this is really talking about how faith works. So what do we do? We meditate the promise of God. We meditate the Word of God. And we talked about what that means. It means to to let the Word of God change the way you think to, to, to where you begin to dream about it. You begin to ponder. You begin to imagine what it would look like to see these promises of healing, of prosperity, of peace, of freedom of righteousness come to pass in your life. Who who would you minister to when you walk in the freedom that God's given you? Who are you gonna bless when God blesses you? You know, whose whose car are you gonna pay off? Whose house are you gonna pay off? You know, and I've helped people with those things, amen? I've blessed people with those kind of things. God's helped us. God's helped us over and over again. And you know what, just like God helps me, God will help you. And so we need to keep believing and keep speaking the word of God. We need to meditate the Word of God. We need to speak the Word. We need to act on the Word of God. You see this word for meditate. It's the Hebrew word. You can read about it here in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. In uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 3. This word meditate means to utter, to mutter, to growl. It just gets in you. Just something in you. You know, when you hear all this garbage and unbelief of the world, something just gets in you and it just comes out of you. You begin to devise, plot, speak, and imagine. You begin to dream about the word of God coming to pass in your life. You see, our, our words precede, or, or our thoughts precede our words, and our words precede our actions. The Bible says this in Psalm 1914, let the meditation of my heart and the uh, uh, the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. You see, Proverbs 16, 23 says, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. What are we saying? And then finally, our words affect our destiny. 
We need to determine to speak words of life and blessing. Words convey faith and lead us into the blessing. So we need to become a doer of the word. Faith without works is dead. But we've got to have co corresponding action to have effective faith. So if we have faith, what are we doing? Doing nothing will get you nowhere. See, some people, they keep thinking the same thoughts, saying the same things, doing the same things, and they wonder why they don't have a different harvest. If you want to have a different harvest, you've got to change what you think, right? Change what you speak and change what you do, and that will lead you into, right? And your dominant thoughts are what you talk about. And, and your words actually lay a course for you to walk in, right, by faith. And when you study Hebrews 11, it's a book all about faith, a chapter all about heroes of faith. They were people of faith because of what they did and what they said. By faith, Noah built. By faith, Abraham obeyed. Through faith, Sarah received strength to conceive seed. By faith, Isaac blessed. By faith, right? Jacob blessed. By faith, Joseph gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses chose. All these people, they, they did works of faith and they spoke words of faith. And so if you want to move into what God says, you got to begin to think, right, what the word says. You begin to believe it. You begin to speak it. You meditate on it. And as you believe it and speak it, then you begin to walk it out. And as you walk it out, you begin to see. If you don't change what you do, you're going to have the same result. The definition of his insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. So if you don't want to go crazy and you want different results, you got to do some things differently. You see, the Bible actually talks about this in the book of James. It talks about the doers of the word are blessed. See, James 1 lays out this principle. He says this, every good in verse 18, verse 17, and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variable, neither shadow of turning. Don't err, don't move from this, my beloved brethren. So you know what? If you want the good, perfect things of God to come to pass in your life, it, it works by a process. First of all, he says in verse 18, of his own will, he begat us with the word of truth that we'd be a kind of first fruit of his creation. You are born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God, 1 Peter 1, 23 says. Then he says this, he says in verse 21, receive with meekness the engrafted word. So you're born of the word, right? And the word, you have the nature of the word in you. So if you're going to put a graft in a tree, you can't graft in a tree that has a different nature. It has to have the same type of nature, right? So you can put a golden apple on a red apple tree and it'll grow, a golden apple. Why? Because it has the same nature. So the nature of the word is in you when you're born of the word. And if you take something received with meekness, the engrafted word, so you hear a promise from the word of God, that agrees with the nature of the word in your spirit, that you receive with meekness. You take a meek attitude towards the word and you say, God, whatever you say in your word, that's what I'm going to do. Right? And then he says it's able to save, that's able to save your soul. Change the way that you think. He says in verse 22, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So, so you, number one, you're born of the word. Then you receive the word with meekness. Right? Then, then he says, become a doer of the word. Let the word of God become an active force in your life. Because if you don't do it, it's not going to change your life. He says, and not hearers only deceiving your own self. Some people hear it, but they don't do it. It doesn't change anything. He says, if any is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a natural man looking at himself in a mirror. And he goes and he forgets what kind of man he was. But whoever looks into, he calls the New Testament the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. So blessing, right? prosperity, success. We could equate that with Joshua 1 verse 8, prosperity and success, blessing. What's blessing preceded by? It's preceded by doing the word. What's doing the word preceded by? Doing the word is preceded by receiving the word, right? So you've got to receive the word, speak the word, right? And receiving the word is preceded by being born of the word. So it starts with being born again, believing on Jesus. So when you believe on Jesus, you are born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And that word has the power to produce a harvest of life in your life. 
You have the power in you to be who God wants you to be, to do what God wants you to do, to go where God wants you to go, to say what God wants you to say, to have what God wants you to have. You have the power of God in you to do that. Hallelujah. But you've got to begin to meditate the word, right? And, and receive that word with, and then become, let the word become, begin to speak the word and then begin to do the word. So doers of the word are blessed. Faith comes by hearing, the Bible says, and hearing by the word of God. We read that earlier this week in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. One translation of it says this, faith comes by declaration and declaration by the mouth of God. That's why all preaching doesn't bring faith. Because all people who are preaching are not declaring who God said that he is. And the Old Testament is a progressive revelation of who God said that he is. The gospels show us Jesus and Jesus reveals who God is. And the epistles show us Christ in us, right? And that's God in us. And so you put it all together, God is my provider, he is my healer, he is my peace, he is my righteousness, he is my sanctification, he is there. And, and he is, you know, all these different things to me, my deliverer, my freedom, that's, that's the seven redemptive names of God in the Old Testament. Then in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is these things. And in the epistles, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Rome, in those letters, that's Christ in you. So you have God in you. So, so faith comes by declaration and declaration by the mouth of God. It begins with an understanding of who God is, who Christ is, and then that Christ, the living God, is living in you. And when you understand that, you have the power of God to walk out what God says you can walk out. Hallelujah. So this word, it's talking about the preaching of the gospel, the good report, or the spoken word. Faith comes by declaration and declaration by the mouth of God. So when we preach the gospel, the good news of who God said he, that he is and what God said he'd do, who Jesus is, the gospel brings faith. Now, doers of the word are blessed. Wisdom or foolishness is based on what we do with the word. I want to go to these scriptures in Matthew chapter 7 that talks about the wise man and the foolish man. The difference between the wise man and the foolish man in the, in, in the, in the message of Jesus is what they do with the word. Okay? Matthew 7 verse 24 to verse 29. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings, these words of mine, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it did not fail because it was founded on a rock. So a foolish man, he's building on the sand. And you know what? When the storm comes, his house falls fl flat. But the wise man, he's building on a rock. You know what? It takes longer to dig deep, to put it in a good foundation, to build on a rock than to build on the sand. But when the storms come, and storms come to everyone, you'll be able to tell who's built their house on the rock and who's built their house on the sand. Everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew. This is Matthew 7, verse 27. Beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It came to pass when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. They were astonished when Jesus taught them. For he taught them as one having authority and not the scribes. You see, Jesus taught them as one who had power. And Jesus wanted to get them out of religion. And he wanted to get them into a relationship with God where the word actually would work in their life. I want to show you something in Mark chapter 7. In Mark chapter 7, Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees and scribes, okay? So they were religious leaders who came from Jer Jerusalem. And when they saw, this is Mark 7, verse 1. In verse 2, it says, When they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands. They might have been related to Pastor Lawson. They found fault. For the Pharisees and the Jews, except they wash their hands, often do not eat, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they came from the market, except they wash their hands, they do not eat. And many other things they have received as the washing of cups, pots, and vessels, and tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked Jesus, why don't your disciples, according to the tradition of elders, eat bread? Why do they eat bread with unwashed hands? Jesus answered and said to them, well, has Isaiah prophesied? of you hypocrites, as it is written. This is Mark 7, verse 6. This people honors me with their lips, but in vain, but their heart is 
far from me. Howbeit in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. He says in verse 8, For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other things that you do. For full well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. Whoever curses father or mother, let him die the death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, it is Corban or a gift by what you may be profited by me, he will be free and suffer him no more to do aught for his father and mother. Making the word of God. Listen to this. Mark 7, verse 13. Making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have delivered and many such things like this you do. So Jesus said that we make the word of God of no effect through our tradition. So if we're going to have the word of God work in our life, we've got to believe the word, receive the word, speak the word, and act on the word. And guess what? When you believe the word, when you receive the word, when you meditate the word, when you speak the word, and when you act on the word, the word will work in your life because the word will never lose its power. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall endure forever. The word of God is going to endure forever. So the word of God has power, and the word of God specifically has power in your mouth. So you keep meditating the word, believe in the word, right? Keep speaking the word, keep acting on the word, and guess what? The word will produce a harvest in your life, just like James chapter 1. Well, you're born of the word, you receive with meekness the engrafted word, you become a doer of the word, and you will be blessed in your deeds. You'll be blessed in your actions. It's a process. Praise God. And this is the last part. It's acting on the word of God. So Jesus talked about this. And in Mark chapter 4, he talked about this in Mark chapter 4, in Matthew chapter 13, in Luke chapter 8, the parable of the sower. And basically, Jesus said everything in the kingdom works on the parable of the sower. And the sower sows what? The word. Let's look at it. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus is talking about this. And, and he, he basically said, if you understand this parable in Mark 4 verse 13, then you can know all parables. In other words, if you can understand this parable of the sower, you can, you can understand all parables. Because everything works like this in God's kingdom. So he says, the sower sows the word. And these are those that are sowed by the wayside. He told the parable before this. So the farmers go into his field and some grain falls out of his plant or his drill. We call that, right, on the way to the field, on the road. And before it ever gets in the ground, the birds come and eat it. You know, Satan is the enemy of the word. And Jesus said, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Satan wants to steal the word because he knows the power of the word in your life. And so if you'll let the word become a productive force in your life, the word will change your life. Now he says in verse 16, these are they who are sown on stony ground, right? The rocky soil. When they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. So they receive the word with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and they endure for a while. But afterwards, affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, and immediately they are offended. Okay, so first soil is the wayside soil. So the farmer's on the way to the field, and some seed falls out of his planter, and the birds eat it before it ever gets to the ground because the road's hard. Then he gets in the field, and, and there's an area of the field where the ground's stony. It's kind of like the western side of Colorado Springs. A lot of the ground is just ground up granite and the seed is planted and it grows up and it has nice flowers right I had this happen when we first moved to Colorado Springs I'm from southeastern Colorado we got deep rich good soil we can grow all kinds of corn watermelon beans you name it tomato but I came here and I tried to grow some squash I mean summer squash in eastern Colorado grow like weeds I mean they're, they're the crook neck yellow squash I love them but you get here. Man, I came here, I can see some. I had a clear space out in my yard. 
in the southwestern part of Colorado Springs. I had a bunch of scrub up growing. There's a clearing where you park the car. I, I went on the side of that where the sunshine. I dug a little ditch. I took some squash seed. I planted them. I watered them. It grew up vines. They grew this long. They grew great big flowers, yellow flowers. They're beautiful. The squash grew. They were about this long. I mean, not that big around. They were that long. They were about this big around, about a quarter inch. I mean, they were dicky. You couldn't feed nothing with them. Why? Because there's no roots. Those vines could not get roots to grow fruit there. So if you're going to grow fruit, you've got to get rooted and grounded, amen, in the gospel. you got to get rooted and grounded in Jesus. That's what it talks about in Colossians chapter 2. And so he says this, this kind of soil is when the word is sown in our heart, but immediately affliction and persecution comes for the word's sake. Do you know religious people many times will persecute you when you preach the word? They'll persecute you for, for, you know, I had some people, they, they, God spoke to them, told them to come to our church. They went to their church, their pastor, they said, pastor, we're going to keep working here another month. We're going to come to early service. We're going to serve, but then we're going to be gone because God told us to go to the other church. They said, what church? They said, Karis Christian Center. Oh, they said that prosperity church. Well, I'm telling you, it's working. We're a prosperous church. We're believing the word. Amen. We're acting on the word and the word's producing a harvest. They said it in a negative way, but I, hey, I received as positive. Because you know what? The word is working. That's what I'm preaching here. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein both day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. That's God's word on the subject. Amen? So he says this is the second kind of ground. Now realize Jesus said in verse 13, Everything in God's kingdom works like this parable of the sower. So the first kind of ground is like the wayside. The farmer's on the way to the field. The seed falls out of the planter. The birds eat it because the ground's hard on the road, and it doesn't even get Satan is the enemy of the word. He wants to destroy the word before it produces harvest in your life. The second type of soil is, is the, the rocky soil, and that's when the word is sown, but persecution and affliction comes because of what the word says, because of the word sake, and people are immediately offended. Well, that didn't work for my Aunt Sally. That didn't work for Uncle Tom. Well, I'm here to tell you it works for me because it's the promise of God. It's not a man's word. It's God's word. You know, it's God that gave the promise. It's not Lawson Purdue's promise, Andrew Womack's promise, Jesse Duplantis' promise. It's not Kenneth Copeland's promise. It's the promise of Almighty God. Then the third type of soil is what? The third type of soil is the weedy soil. And this, the, the word is planted, but there's weeds. And the weeds choke the word so the word is unproductive. You know, I used to farm in eastern Colorado, dry land. And we would go out there three, four, five times a summer. And, and we rotate crops every other year, right? But we would plow that, that field, you know, one way. It. We would kill all the weeds. You know, they sweep it one way, disc, plow, different, different ways, kill weeds. But it's all to kill the weeds and keep the soil clean so when you plant the seed, the, the moisture, because it's a limited moisture atmosphere, can go to the seed and produce a harvest, right? But if you got weeds, you got to spray the weeds because the weeds will, will put, the weeds will kill, right? The, the, they'll make the, the, the wheat so it has no fruit. So that's, the, he says, this weedy soil, this sown among thorns are when the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the less of other things choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. He says, and these are they who are sown on the good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100-fold. So there's four kinds of ground, right? First of all, we got the, the road, right, the wayside soil. The farmer's on the way to the field, the seed falls on the road, the birds eat it. That's Satan coming to steal the word before it's ever in their heart. Then you got the, the, the rocky soil. And the, and the seed's sown there and it grows, but because it can't get any depth. When persecution or affliction comes for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Then you got the weedy soil. The word's growing. It's in the field. What is the, what is the field? What is the soil? It's our heart. That's the only thing we can change. The word is consistent in every area. The sower, Jesus is the sower that sows the word, right? The word will produce a harvest. It is incorruptible seed of Almighty God, and it will produce a harvest in your life. If you'll believe the word, the word will work. But then, what do you got? You've got not only the, the thorny soil, right? You've got, you got the, the wayside soil, you've got the rocky soil, you've got the weedy soil, where the cares of this world, 
the deceitfulness of riches. You've got to keep the, atti- the right attitude towards money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil, but the love of it is. And some have coveted after and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things choke the word out. Sometimes the word can't get root because there's so many other things competing for the attention, for our attention. But then there's the good soil. Everybody say, I am good soil. The good soil brings forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold. Say, that's good. What's 100-fold soil? 100-fold soil is where you are 100% walking in the will, the plan, and the purpose of God for your life. You're being fruitful. You're multiplying. You are accomplishing what God has called you to accomplish in the full way. Amen? And so Jesus said, everything in the kingdom works this way. Amen? The earth, your heart, brings fruit of itself. Our heart is bringing forth a harvest. You know what? If you don't like the harvest, you can change what you're doing. You can change what you're meditating on, right? You can change what you're speaking and you can change what you're doing with the word. And when you get the proper attitude, you think the word, you meditate the word, right? You believe the word, you speak the word, you act on the word, the word will produce a harvest of life in your life. We have harvest. If we don't like it, we have the power to change it through our thoughts, our words, and our actions. And God has a destiny for us. It's up to us to walk it out. Friends, I'm teaching from my series, Success Made Simple. And I have a free CD, a mini teaching of this that you can get. I also have a confession card that we'll send you out free of charge, and it will help you walk out these promises of God. Thanks for tuning in. If you need prayer, you want a partner, or you want product, give us a call today. Thanks so much. God bless you. What are the keys to being successful? Jesus made it easy. In this series, Success Made Simple, you'll learn how to meditate on the Word, speak the Word, and then act on the Word. Jesus wants you to be successful in life. You can get it today for $19 with free shipping. Call 719-418-4000 or visit LawsonPurdue.com. We just want to say a very special thank you to all of our partners. We're taking the Word of God around the world. We hear weekly from countries all over the world, from the Middle East, from Asia, from Europe, from Africa, from South America, from Mexico. Praise God, our partners are helping us share the Word. If you want to become a partner, just give us a call today. We would love to hear from you. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000 or go to LawsonPurdue.com or write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.